everybody, Mr. Wyatt here. It's good to be back again. And today we're looking at section 10 of topic four, relating tables, graphs, and equations. And you know what, everybody? I wore myself a tie today because I wanna look nice for you because you guys matter, I care about you. So today I wore my SpongeBob nerdy pants tie. Very nice, huh? SpongeBob nerdy pants because I care about you. All right, anyway, um, relating tables, graphs, and equations. Nancy walks four blocks to Maria's house. All right, here's Nancy. She's going to walk four blocks over here to Maria's house. Nancy's house, two, three, four blocks to Maria's house. Together, they continue the walk. The walk can be described using this rule right here, N equals M plus 4. What that means is, um, N is the number of blocks Nancy walks, N for Nancy, and M is the number of blocks Maria walks. Maria's not going to walk as far because Nancy has to walk four blocks just to get Maria's house, get to Maria's house, and that's when Maria finally joins in. So whatever Maria walks, her total distance, add four and you'll have Nancy's distance. That's why we have Nancy equaling Maria plus four additional blocks, okay? Um, describe how the equation, the table, and the graph reflect their walk. So we have our rule here, n equals m plus 4 in the top of our table. So if Maria walks one block, plus 4, Nancy walks five blocks. If Maria walks two blocks, add the four that Nancy had to walk to get there, and that's 6. 3 plus 4 is 7. So hopefully you can see how that table works. That ties in with what we were doing yesterday. The one additional step we have today is graphing this relationship on a coordinate plane. So I have a coordinate plane here. This is our x-axis right here. And the x-axis or the input here is m Maria, the number of blocks Maria walks. The y-axis right here is the one that goes up down, the vertical one. And that is representing Nancy, or N, the distance Nancy is going to walk. So what you see on the graph here is when Maria walks zero blocks, Nancy has already walked four blocks. And so that, that we have a point, our starting point is right there. Okay. Now, when, if Maria has walked one block, as you can see in the table, Nancy has walked five blocks. So here's one block for Maria. One, two, three, four, five blocks for Nancy. We put a point there. If Maria walks three blocks, add four additional, and you'll have Nancy walking seven blocks. Here's three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have a point there. Um, oh, I skipped one, didn't I? If Maria walks two blocks, add four. Nancy will walk six blocks. So here's two, and then up three, four, five, six. We have a point there. What you'll know is these notice is these points line up here in a straight path. Every time Maria adds a block, Nancy adds a block as well. Okay? And this pattern will continue forever. That's why I have the arrow there. And we can show our arrow going forever in that direction. The pattern will continue. Well, at least until they finish their walk. Okay? See how it forms a line? That's why we call these linear equations. You turn line, that noun, into an adjective, and you have linear, linear equations. We will talk about other types of equations and graph other types of equations in future years, but as sixth graders, you're going to be focusing just on the ones that do form a nice line when you graph them. They are linear equations. All right, looking at another example, I'm looking at the temperature, T. It was 6 degrees Celsius at 8 a.m., and it increased 2 degrees Celsius, Celsius each hour for six hours one spring day. What was the temperature after six hours? Okay, so it started at 6 degrees Celsius at 8 a.m., Okay, so zero means we're not adding any hours yet. So the temperature T depends on the number of hours passed N. So if we have not passed any hours, we haven't passed any time, we're still at six degrees Celsius. 
But now every time, um, it'll go up two degrees Celsius each hour. Now be careful here because N is the number of hours. If I had one hour here, then I would add two degrees and I'd be up to eight. But notice in the table, it's jumping to two hours. So I'm actually going to jump to 10. Instead of going up two degrees, it went up four degrees because we went up two hours here. So two hours, it goes up 10 degrees. Four hours, it goes up 14 degrees. Six hours, it goes up 18 degrees. Okay, so a person could ask, well, how can I write a rule for this one? How am I getting from zero to six, from two to 10, from four to 14, from six to 18? And this is going a little bit beyond what I wanna discuss in this lesson, but I'm actually gonna tell you what you can do. T, the temperature, equals two times N, plus six, all right? If you take two times zero, you get zero. If you then add six, you get six degrees. If you put two in for the, the number of hours that have passed, two times two is four, four plus six is 10. Four hours, substitute that in for N. Two times four is eight, eight plus six is 14. Six hours, two times six is 12, 12 plus six is 18 and so on. Now, if the temperature is rising, there is a point where it's going to stop rising. So it won't go forever in a straight path. It won't keep rising at that rate. Eventually, the temperature is either going to level off or I'll start to drop. Okay. So what does it look like in a graph? Well, when you have your table, it's, 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 it's not too bad graphing it. You have zero six here. After zero hours, the temperature is six degrees. So here's the hours is your time or your input. It goes along the x-axis. Um, T, the temperature, goes along the y-axis. So after zero hours, it is six degrees. Zero six is our starting point. And then two hours, it's 10 degrees. After two hours passes, it's up to 10 degrees Celsius. After four hours pass, it's up to 14 degrees. After six hours passed, it's up to 18 degrees and so on and so forth. You see how those points form a perfect straight path. Okay, so I have my rule here, T equals 2N plus 6. I'm going to teach you later this year how you can write rules by looking at the table. I had a little um, method I used to be able to go from the table to having this rule. Okay, but today I am going to talk a little bit about how you can look at a graph and from the graph come up with your rule. Um, and that's what I want to do in these last couple of examples here, okay? So it says, write an equation for each graph. Believe it or not, this is a sixth grade standard. The state of Minnesota is, yes, sixth graders should be able to write an equation just by looking at a graph. Well, I'm going to notice a couple things when I look at this table, this graph. One thing I notice is it starts up here at two. It doesn't start at zero. This other one starts at zero. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. And I have my points here. I have 0, 2. I can write that point like this, 0, 2. I have a point here, which is 1 for my x. See, I'm on the x-axis here, 1. And up 3 on my y-axis. So I have 1, 3 here. When I'm writing ordered pairs like this, I always put the x first and the y second. And ordered pairs are always in parentheses too. X first, then Y, your input, and then your output. When your input is three, it looks like the output is five. So can I write a rule for this? Um, the easiest way to write a rule for this, don't ever try to write rules or equations for graphs unless you make a table first. All right, we were looking at some a table back here, for example. Here's a table right here. Uh, we looked at a lot of tables yesterday also. And yesterday I did mention to you that you can call the tables T tables. Let me show you why. If I'm just making a table quickly, I can make what looks kind of like a T. I'll put my X's over here and my Y's over here. 
Now, when x was 0, y was 2. So I'm going to put that in my table. When x is 1, y is 3. I'll put that in my table. When x is 2, I mean, when x is 3, y is 5. I'll put that in my table. Does it look like I skipped over something? I have 0, 1, and then all of a sudden, shouldn't there be a 2 in here? Yeah, there should be. And you can see 2, 4 would go right here. I skipped that point when I was listing my ordered pairs before, wasn't I? So I should have included 2 and 4 here in the table as well. But now that I have made my table, my T table, my XY table, my input output table, I can write a rule. Find a pattern of how you're getting from X to Y. 0 to 2, 1 to 3, 2 to 4, 3 to 5. Oh, this one's pretty easy to spot. Every time to get from X to Y, I'm adding 2. Y is always 2 more than X. So for my rule on this one, my equation on this one, it's Y equals X plus 2. And that is my equation for this line. Don't try writing the equation without first making a table, okay? Now, let's do the same thing on this one over here. This point is at 0, 0. Okay, that's called the origin on the coordinate plane because that's where we always begin. We originate right there at 0, 0. I like writing the ordered pair 0, 0 because I think it kind of looks like the face of an owl. It looks like an owl's face to me. But again, we've established this before. I'm weird. Okay? Now, this point, where is it located? Well, my x is 1, my y is 2. And this point, my x is 2, my y is 4. And this point here, my x is 3, and my y, I don't know what my y is. Because it is above my grid here, it's not really showing on my grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put what I do know in a table, an xy table. xy, when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, y is un known. Maybe we'll figure out what that is, though, once we figure out our rule. Okay, so now that I have put all these points that you see on this line here in the graph, now that I have put them in a table, and again, you need to put them in a table before you try figuring out what your equation is. Now that I have them in a table, though, let's see if we can find a pattern. How do we get from x to y? And it has to be the same rule every time. How do I get from 0 to 0? Well, I can multiply by anything. Or I could add 0, but I'm not going to add 0 because down here, 1 plus 0, does that equal 2? No. Does 2 plus 0 equal 4? No. So it looks like I'm going to have to multiply. Well, 0 times anything would be 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So could I multiply by 2 every time? It looks like I could. So it looks like my equation will be y equals 2 times x. If that is my rule, then what would go here in this box? Well, 2 times 3, which is 6. And let's see here. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Does that look like it's up about 6? It does to me. So I came up with my equation, y equals 2x, by first making a table and then looking for patterns in the table of how I would get from my x value to my y value. This is a little bit more challenging, um, but we are going to spend um, more time on it this year, working on this. And it is one of those tested skills. It's in the Minnesota State Standards. Um, it's something you would see on the MCA test. If we end up taking it this year, we didn't have to last year because we were off due to COVID. I don't know this year if we'll have to take the MCA test or not. Either way, we do need to know how to do these things. So that's what you do. If you see a graph of a linear equation, if you see a graph of a line, you make a table, fill in those values in the table, and then look for a pattern of how you're getting from X to Y. That's it. Have a nice day, everybody.